released for the first time in 2007. To this day, Assassin's Creed can be considered one of the most successful game brands in the genre in general, in general, and Ubisoft in particular. It has a memorable and memorable character, along with the continuously released versions, and each version brings players to a new world. By 2016, Assassin's Creed was brought to the public by director Justin Kurzel. It's not too difficult to understand when Assassin's Creed by Ubisoft always has a very large and popular fan base. And standing in front of the potential of this game brand, Hollywood is certainly not surprised. And that is a cooperation between Ubisoft and 20th Century Fox to bring to life a live action Assassin's Creed movie. I thought this was going to be a movie that escaped from the original game and turned into a movie. But Assassin's Creed is still tied to this origin. The movie received a lot of negative reviews, most of which came from critics and general public. That's for the professional side. As for the revenue, the movie with a budget of 125 million USD, the number of 240.7 million USD can only be bought. But it's hard to accept with a case like Assassin's Creed. So what happened in Assassin's Creed? Let's find out in today's video. Welcome back to Way Too Weird. I'm Bonnie, and this is a video about Assassin's Creed. The film was released in 1492 in Andalusia, Spain. The main character in the past was Aquila de Neja, who was the founder of an organization called the Assassin Brotherhood, also known as the Assassin Order, which was originally called the Hidden Ones, a global peacekeeping organization dedicated to protecting humanity from abuse of power, oppression, and oppression. Aquila was tasked with protecting Prince Ahmed of Granada from the Templars, also known as the Knights of the Temple, who were opposed to the Templars. Aquila was sentenced to 494 years in prison until 1986. Colin Collins, a teenager, discovered that his mother, Mary, had been assassinated by her father, Joseph, a modern-day assassin. After the assassination, gunmen led by Alan Ritkin, director of the Abstergo organization, a multinational corporation and the backbone of the Templars' modern activities, came to arrest Joseph, who persuaded his son to escape. At the age of 16, Carl had grown up. His life in Britain seemed to be at a standstill. When he was sentenced to death for murdering a witch, he seemed to have been exiled to this world. But Carl did not know that his execution was done by the Abstergo organization. On the day of the injection of three doses of poison to commit suicide, Abstergo brought him to the research facility of the organization in Madrid. The reason they brought him here was not to join Real Madrid. He was told that the Templars were looking for something called the Apple of Eden, something that is considered a treasure that can dispel violence by controlling the free will of mankind. Sophia, Alan's daughter, and the scientist at the head of the project revealed that Carl was the descendant of Aguilar, the last person to be confirmed to possess the Apple of Eden. She placed Carl in the Animus, a machine that allows him to revive his ancestor's memory. And from there, the scientists of the organization will observe Aguilar's memory, so that Abstergo can find out what Aguilar did with the Apple of Eden. Returning to Spain in the 15th century, Aguilar and his accomplice Maria were tasked with rescuing Ahmed, who had been kidnapped by Tomás de Toledo. Torquemada, an ambassador of the Templars in Spain. Torquemada's goal when he kidnapped Prince Ahmed was to force his father, King Sultan Mohammed VII, to surrender and hand over the temple to the Templars. After that, Aquila and Maria stopped the Templar soldiers, but were quickly overwhelmed and arrested by Torquemada's executioner named Ogeta. Carl was then quickly pulled out of animus by Sophia, and when he fell to the ground, Callum began to see the image of his ancestor, the old Aquila, in modern times. This is the side effect of using animus, called the bleeding effect. Accordingly, this effect is a sign of confusion, in which the memory of the ancestor of a person begins to mix with the real memory of that person. This often leads to difficulties in distinguishing between the two memories in serious cases. This effect can lead to mental breakdown. The next day, Callum was introduced to other people in the city of Atlantis in the 18th century. The members of the killers protected and continued to protect the apple from the Templars until this day. When he returned to his cell, Callum was once again greeted by the image of Akela, and this time he participated in the battle with a vivid image. At this time, countless soldiers rushed into his cell, following the orders of the priest Alan Ricken, Sophia's father, and was under a lot of pressure from the Templars when they had to determine the location of the apple as soon as possible. Callum was still affected by the effect of bleeding. He began to fight with the soldiers and shouted a few names before being controlled. Pulling him out, they stopped in front of the head of the security department of the Mark Gowen facility. 
Accordingly, Callum had to endure another tragedy when he began to sing Crazy by Willie Nelson, which was deeply imprinted in his consciousness since the day his mother was murdered. Back to Animus, Callum turned back to the past. At this time, Akella and Maria were on a plan to execute by Otto Dafe, also known as Burning. But with the glory of the killers, Akella escaped for himself and Maria. Since then, there has been a chase on the roof while they were hiding, and was dragged to the edge of the abyss. Both of them used the Leap of Faith, a dance that became the trademark of the Assassin's Creed series, to escape. Carl's mind was very responsive when performing the Leap of Faith, and it made him temporarily paralyzed, wake up and go back to normal after a short period of time. Carl learned that his father was also at this research facility. He confronted Joseph about his mother's death, Accordingly, Joseph informed him that the blood flow effect would allow Carl to now possess the fighting ability of Aguilar. He was also told that his mother was a killer and that she chose death in the hands of Joseph instead of being forced into animus. Unconvinced, Carl vowed to destroy the Assassin's Creed by finding the apple. Meanwhile, Alan was under pressure by Templar Alan Kay from the Council of Elders, who ordered him to close the animus project worth billions of dollars because the council believed in their victory because humans now no longer care about their civil liberties and they were willing to follow, causing Sophia to ask questions about Chaco's true intentions. Returning to the research facility, Carl was ready to step into Animus. And so the film jumps back to the past. At this point, Akela and Maria reenact the encounter between Muhammad and Torquemada. In the end, they succeed in killing the soldiers and retrieving the apple. Although Ojeda captured Maria to force Akela to surrender, However, Maria chose to die and stabbed herself in Ojeda's sword. Akela saw his teammate die, so he rushed to kill Ojeda and escape with another leap. Its strength caused Enemus to meet a serious setback. However, the scientists at the facility determined the location of the apple. In other words, after Akela got the apple, he gave the apple to an explorer named Christopher Colombo, who promised to take it to the grave. At this time, Musa and other modern killer prisoners began a riot to escape, and Alan issued orders to guard the facilities before fleeing. And now, Carl is still standing in Enemus's office, and he saw the figure of some of his killer ancestors, including Akela. A French killer named Arnold Dorian, his father. Joseph and his mother, while Sophia glanced at the figure of a killer who looked like her before she had to leave with her father. Convinced by his mother, Carl accepted to join the Killer Association, and after fully assimilating his memories and abilities with Attila, together with Musa and the other survivors, the whole association was ready to wipe out the soldiers and escape from the facility. On the Templar side, after receiving the apple from Columbo's tomb, Alan and his companions gathered at a funeral in Holborn Hall in London, England to celebrate their victory. Inside the hall, Sophia was silent when she met Carl, who had come to take the apple, and she reluctantly allowed him to act. Carl took the apple, but killed Alan to do so. While Sophia swore to avenge Car Carl, the killers left, swore once again that they would protect the apple from the soldiers. The film ends with Carl and other modern day killers bowing their heads and leaving with the slogan, we live in the dark to serve the light. And that's our summary of Assassin's Creed. So now the question is, why did the film fail in terms of both content and revenue? Let's find out in the next part of the video. Translating a game, comic, or novel into a screenplay is always a challenge for filmmakers. And that challenge is how to make the film accessible to those who have never played a game, read a comic, read a novel, or to be more precise, how to balance a film that audiences and critics can watch and evaluate as a good film. This is a very difficult equation. However, if it can be done, the film will certainly receive positive reviews from both the critics and the audience. An example to successfully prove that a game-based film has satisfied both the critics and the audience can be a TV series, Arcane, Fallout, or The Last of Us. With a screenplay, it can be the Super Mario Bros. movie, or Sonic the Hedgehog, or Back to Assassin's Creed. So in the end, will the film be able to balance between the critics and the audience? The answer is definitely no, because if the film did well, Way to Wear wouldn't be here to talk about why the film failed. The film is really hard to approach with the general public when the film has too many idioms, too many phrases, too much information to go along with it is a vast world with a very complicated timeline. Even for those who have played all the games of this series, understanding all the worries of the game is not simple at all. With a game that has such complex idioms, stories, and timelines, it's really not easy to approach the audience. And the result is that a lot of viewers, after watching the movie, are still confused, 
confused and don't understand what just happened in the movie. Things like Hidden Blade, what is the end? What is Leap of Faith? Why did the killers jump from the sky like that? And why did Carl meet the illusion from his ancestor? Why did the Templars and assassins collide for centuries? In general, the movie was a complete failure in balancing the content so that both the audience and the audience could watch it. The length of the movie is also a problem to talk about why the movie is so unattractive. With one hour, 55 minutes, the length of the movie is too short. Especially with a game like Assassin's Creed, this length of the movie is not enough to combine both modern and past narratives. For example, in the game Assassin's Creed, the gameplay takes at least four to eight hours to complete, or even up to hundreds of hours like the recently released versions. Because of such a long gameplay, players will gradually get used to it and understand the character they are controlling more. From there, the connection between the player and the character in the game should be created. However, in the movie, the plot of the film is too short and can't read anything to the viewer, when the story of the past and the story in the modern world are both boring and lacking depth. In addition to the fact that it is difficult to approach the general public, the fact that the film is too focused on the story in the modern era is also a factor that makes the film not satisfying for the general public and also makes it difficult for fans to like the film. If you don't know, Assassin's Creed, like almost all versions, always has a blend between two stories, a story in the present and a story in the past. Especially the story in the past is always a favorite thing for fans, because Assassin's Creed is always a very tricky game in how to combine historical events as well as historical characters in your game. For example, Assassin's Creed II with the Renaissance period in Italy. Assassin's Creed III is the battle of 13 states in the United States. Assassin's Creed United is the French Revolution, or Assassin's Creed Shadow will take place in the Japanese Empire. So what about Assassin's Creed movie? The film takes place in Spain in 1492, the heyday of the Islamic Empire and the unification of Spain. It can be said that this is a scene with a lot of potential that can be explored, but due to the time of the film is too short. So thank you. An extremely functional scene of the film was abandoned in a wasteful way. Instead, the filmmakers focused too much on the story in the modern era and only focused on the story in the past as a foundation. The result is that the film is over and the story in Spain almost does not leave too many impressions for the audience after it is released. With a story that doesn't get the heart of non-fans and fans like that, like pouring more oil on the fire, Ubisoft also creates one of the most bland characters that you may have never thought of. Despite the participation of famous stars like Michael Fassbender, their acting is not convincing enough to bring vitality and spirit to the character. The killer of Aquila and the descendant of Ka are all too bland and do not create any remarkable highlights for the viewer. Even a historical character like Columbo, the explorer who found the USA does not leave any impression for the audience. In addition to letting us know that he is Columbo, the characters on the Templar side are also very bland. Lack of light, and especially the Abstergo organization, cannot create danger like what the game can do. In addition to a bad script and an unfamiliar character, another reason why the movie of Fox and Ubisoft failed in terms of popularity is because it had to compete with two heavy opponents. The film was released on the same day as Sing and Passengers, and only a week later, Rogue One A Star Wars Story was released. With a lot of famous movies for the audience at that time, Assassin's Creed had to face a difficult ticket war from the start. As a result, according to box office mojo statistics, the film only received 240 million USD worldwide throughout its lifespan. But in general, a movie needs to earn 2.5 times the budget to be profitable. In other words, Assassin's Creed has caused the film to lose about 70 million USD. Since then, the Assassin's Creed 2 project has never appeared again. And that was the summary, as well as the explanation of the failure of the Assassin's Creed project. Hopefully in the near future, when Netflix reveals that they are making a TV series about this genre, they will not make the same mistakes that we have mentioned above. What about you guys? What do you think about this movie? And what do you hope for in the future of the Assassin's Creed project? Please leave a comment below for us to discuss more. And now, Winterward out.